Good morning, guys. It is Jonathan with One Big Impacts. First of all, be stronger than your excuses, okay? <laughs> it is a video today on how to run a half marathon. Now, if any of you know, I'm training, not completed, a half marathon. Now, some of you are going to be like, oh, screw this, he hasn't done it. Okay, so here's the first thing that you need to do. You need to know that you're going to complete this. This is literally the most important thing that you could ever do. Okay? So now, and that's with anything. You have to literally visioning, vision yourself. And it's hard. Okay? I know. It's difficult thinking about that. And I have a wild imagination, but I find it very difficult to vision myself doing things. Not necessarily visioning the things. But putting myself in there is strange to me, so I understand how difficult it can be. Try writing it down, talking about it, the things that you're going to see, the things that you're going to experience along the way. Now, I am currently like, let's see, how many days away? How many days until November 16th? 46 days away from running my half marathon. Myself, Tarzan, Stephanie, so far, three people, we're all going together. Okay, we're running a rock and roll marathon for St. Jude's. I'm running it for St. Jude's Children's Hospital in Vegas. Um, I've been training, okay, training. Didn't know I was training originally. I'm on my 20th week. I was looking, visioning my thing over there, I have a list on the wall. See the pink one on the list? Um, that is the list for the current run plan. And I'm honing in, got about six, seven weeks, something like that before I hit the goal. As you can see, all those medals, most of them are from a few years ago, but one, two, three, four are from recent races that I've completed. Um, one was a virtual race, one was a 10K, which I've never completed in my life, and then another one was a 5K. So, I got a bunch of tips and a bunch of information, excuse me, that I want to be able to share because the other day I hit nine miles, that's the furthest I've ever run in my life, um, but if you do the math, that's only about four miles, 4.1 miles away from being able to achieve a half marathon. Okay, so I don't know how much further I'm going to go with this, if, if at all. Um, I am setting myself up mentally for the half marathon, and then at that point, we will reassess. I'm kind of looking around at stuff about a triathlon. I don't know. But it looks really expensive um, as far as like the different cost of things. The most important thing that I can tell you on this is... I have a list of things, but I would say the most important thing is stay injury free and focus on kind of doing a, maybe like a 5K or something in the beginning just to feel out your body. And obviously you have to be able to run the whole thing. If you get runner's knee or your feet hurt or something like that, go to a run store. Um, that was very informational. We didn't realize that at first. Um, I'm also a personal trainer, but this is kind of new to me, the whole running thing, like long distance and stuff. I did it for a couple 5Ks. Back in the day, I ended up with like some pain and an injury in my calf slash Achilles heel. I had to go to physical therapy and things like that, so it kind of stopped me from running. Then my excuses got the best of me. Be stronger than your excuses. And it just got out of control, and then I stopped running. Anyway, long story short, long story short I have a few clients um, that wanted to run a mud run. Specifically, Gina brought it up and wanted to run a mud run. And by the way, shout out, she dropped her mile um, by about a minute and beat it, beat her overall minute or mile by seven seconds. 
ever that she's ever done. So it's really exciting. But I said, and it was a girls only mud run. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to train with them, even though I can't run the race. So I don't want to say I kind of got the bug, but I kind of got the bug because I'm like, well, I need to drop weight. I ended up dropping. I'm, I'm like 37 pounds down in 45 days. And that's the last recorded. It should be 49 days, 50, 52 days. And then I'll be 39 pounds down, something like that by Friday. So it's kind of been a whirlwind, okay? And I know this is pre-half marathon, but I know I'm going to run it. And uh, I've already got my ticket. I've already got my plane ticket. Everything's good to go. I just got to keep pushing forward. My run partner has flaked on me today, so I'm quite upset about that. But um, I've been running alone for like four or five days now. Six days. Stephanie, you're a bull. First thing, don't skip runs. The reason I say this, and you can, beyond this, I'm going to go through all these things. I know I kind of blabbed and stuff like that, but I just want to give you a little backstory of what's kind of going on. Three things. These are just little honorable mentions or whatever, and then I'm going to go into the important stuff. Run slow. I know that sounds whack. Okay, run slow. Do not worry about numbers, okay? You need to be able to run the entire time, okay? So you're going to start, by the way, if you're new here, check us out on Facebook. Our group is called Healthy Living for Healthy Life. We have multiple run plans. I have a 5K training program. It's free. It's in the file section of the group. I'm um, getting ready to write a 10K and half marathon training program as well. Thank you, Ellen, for your help. So those will be very, very soon. I'll put a link to the group in the description below. Links to all kinds of stuff in the description that I have learned along the way. Run slow. Don't worry about it. The next thing, don't rush. Okay, Don't rush, meaning don't rush your ability to be able to long, run long distance. The, the biggest, I think, most important thing for me and as a personal trainer, my advice to you is stay injury free and if that takes giving your body time to adapt to these long runs that's perfectly fine I just told you I'm at nine miles okay I'm at roughly 20 ish 21 23 miles per week right now and I've been running for 20 weeks okay maybe longer uh, that as far as I know it's I've got it written down as 20 weeks but I started real slow for the first four or five weeks. I didn't even run. It was like a walk, jog. It was very slow. Um, I cranked out a couple 5Ks in the first couple of weeks just to see if I could do it. But my weight was up, and I was not good on my time. It was like 36 minutes. I just ran a 5K the other day, my fastest time ever in my life, 28 minutes, 3 seconds, which I was really proud of. Um, got a couple of awards for that, so that was really good. Um, for me, I'm a 200-plus pound guy still. I got about 100 pounds of muscle. Oxygen takes, or muscle takes a lot of oxygen, so I'm not a real speed runner, um, but I'm making sure I do it and conquering this for myself because regardless if I'm a runner or have a runner's body or built for running, it doesn't matter because I'm still pushing for that regardless. So that's my goal, and I'm going to make it. Um, don't rush the process. Do your research. Do your research on runs. The fact that you're watching this and learning is really important. And it's going to be massive amounts of information. I'm not going to say you're going to want to listen to my whole blabbing, whatever. Okay, that's fine. Go find somebody that has quick information. Go find somebody that has whatever. I'm making this because I'm sharing my process because I'm in the process right now. And I feel like if it's not fresh and you're not actually going through it right then, Chances are you're going to forget some stuff, okay? So that's why I'm kind of documenting and helping others understand the whole process. Today I have a four-mile run. In two days I have a five-mile run. In four days I have a ten-mile run. So it's happening really fast, you know, and it does do that. Um, the first thing, now we're going into our list. 
do not skip your runs. Don't skip any runs. I don't care what it is. If it carries on to the next day or if you're injured or something like that, back off a little bit. So for instance, my run partner, aka my client, Stephanie, is had some hip problems. So she's a mile behind me. When I run, and this is only for our big runs, if we run uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday are our small runs. So if we run four, five, four miles, she will run four, five, four miles. But on Sunday, our big run, say I run nine miles, she'll run eight. Say I run seven, she'll run six. Because we're trying to give her body time to adapt and backing off the runs a little bit really helped her hips kind of adapt to the whole process because there's so many different things I could teach you and I'll probably go into like a whole series of you know staying injury free how to roll out and I've made videos on that so search around on my channel and stuff like that because I recommend that you stretch dynamically before you stretch static after roll out before and after and these things are massively important if you don't you're gonna end up locked up you need to work on your flexibility and everything and cross training and everything like that so next thing run three to four times per week there's going to be all types of information out there where people are telling you to run once a week, run one run every day. You do what you want, but I suggest staggering your days like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or something like that. Monday, I'm running Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, okay? The other days I'm lifting, seven days a week right now, okay? I'm not going to say my lifting is what it was because I'm tired. You know, the run, the big runs especially are making me extremely tired. Um, and that's predominantly because I stay low carb six days a week. And then I bump them up one day for my big run day for about 24 hour period to be able to sustain and refuel all my minerals and vitamins and everything like that because I'm staying pretty dumb, well depleted. Um, but run that much or else you're not going to be able to keep up with those big runs, especially if you're not built for running, as I would say, which is not probably the best thing to say. But I'm not a bad runner necessarily. Um, but for instance, the guy that won the race the other day, 22 minutes. He's a little guy, super tiny guy. <laughs> I'm really proud of him that 22 minutes beat me by six minutes. Not that that's a huge spread, but... I mean, over the course of a long run, that could be a much larger span of time. Listen to your body is the next thing. If your body is saying like, hey, relax, take it easy or whatever, I'm not going to say you don't want to push past a certain point of that, certain amount of those things or whatever, but if you're straight up injured, back off on the training. If you don't know how to fix whatever is happening to you, back off. Slow down a little bit. You could potentially run the same run, the same run pattern. Say you're running 15 miles this week and your body's like you're pushing, pushing, pushing. And you you probably feel like maybe you're running too fast, meaning like you're accelerating too fast. You're moving up with the runs too fast. Do the same 15 miles like three or four weeks. Let your body adapt to that. It's fine. It's not going to put you back like that massively. Okay, that's why you want to give yourself plenty of time to train for this. Some people will say 12 to 15 weeks or whatever for that. Now, that's fine if you're already active. But if you can't run a mile, okay, or you can't run three miles, then I'm sorry, 8, 10, 12 weeks is not going to be enough to be able to run a marathon. If you have weight to lose and you can't run a mile, you need to work on other things first, okay? You need to lose the weight. You need to work on your endurance. You need to get up to a mile, get up to two miles, get up to three miles. Once you can probably run a 5K, then start training to go further. But get your diet in check. Make sure your food's right, everything like that. Next thing, track your runs. Massively important, not only because you can see where you're going or whatever, as far as like everything is concerned, but understanding that you're accelerating, you're doing better, being able to go back and forth. Um, some of my clients use Map My Run. I use Strava just because that's what I started using and it seems to work fine. And if you randomly 
turn off your phone like a ding dong in the middle of your run. When you restart your phone, it saves your run and you're still running and it kind of gives you a little notice to continue, which is really good. Um, <clears throat> next thing, get a run partner that shows up. No, Stephanie's been really good actually. Um, she probably got sucked into this and now I think she's excited about achieving the goal as well. Uh, but get a run partner and if you can't, so whatever, who cares? Um, there's lots of groups and stuff like that that you can join on Facebook um, and different things. But try to get a run partner. See if you can get somebody involved. Um, if you can't, that's fine. Count on yourself. But sometimes a run partner really helps. Um, like specifically the other day, I'm not going to lie, we ran five miles and Stephanie was like popped full of energy and I was dead. It was the fastest five miles we ever ran. We ran really fast. But we ran on the sidewalk the whole time and about three miles in my knees were absolutely killing me because I have runner's knee pretty bad in both knees right now. So I probably would have realistically had to stop if she had not been kept running. So I, that was really helpful. Next thing is good shoes. So I'll show you my run shoes. Hold on. My run shoes started out when I was doing shorter runs as these, uh, the Nike Torch 4. I'm not going to lie, I've ran a few 5Ks, no problem. Um, but as I went further, I learned more about like my run pattern and um, my collapsed arches and stuff like that. Now, I'm not going to say these have helped completely, but I'm not going back to the other shoe now that I've already bought them. Um, these are the shoes I'm running in now. And how they help me is that little cross brace on the bottom makes it so the shoe, and they may bend now, but you see how it's pretty rigid? And then if I turn this one, it literally just folds, right? Okay? Do you understand and see that? So the reason that matters is because I have collapsed arches, so I need a lot more strong support in there so that it doesn't just, you know, give under every single jump or step or whatever. And obviously, if you're lighter, Maybe that won't be such an issue, um, but collapsed arches can be a very big thing. And basically, what happens is you got pronation or supination or whatever of your foot, and then it sends your. So you got. Okay, so if you have a collapsed arch, this is with your arch. You collapse the arch, and it throws this, your knee out of whack, and it could be throwing your hips out of whack and everything like that. So I think that's probably, you know, the cause of my runner's knee and stuff like that. Um, the other thing is these are just a couple things that I recommend. A run belt. So the shoes obviously are really important. You can go to a run store, scan the barcode, buy them on Amazon, maybe buy some socks from them or whatever, but you'll save a lot of money. They wanted 170 bucks for those shoes. I got them for 89 bucks on Amazon. I will definitely refer everybody to that run store because they take you through a little test and video your shoes and stuff like your how you run and stuff like that. But buy some socks out of a thank you or something small or something um, as a thank you. Because don't just use them or whatever. Make sure you give them back. But a run belt is another important thing. This one's actually really good. Thank you, Gina. Gina got me this. I appreciate you. Um, and I could put my phone in there, headphones, keys, and stuff like that. I'm going to be upgrading soon to... I like this one, though, a lot because it's very thin. I'm actually going to use this for travel, I believe, and all kinds of things. So it su fits super thin. And then when you put stuff in, then it can expand. Um, and it's super, super lightweight. That'll be in the description below. The next one I'm going to get is going to be one just like that, but it has tiny little water bottles on the side. And you can check that one out in the description. It's only like $14.99, which is like ridiculously cheap. Um, and the single most important thing when you're running as far as accessories, one thing. I'll give you five seconds. Go ahead. See if you can guess. Headphones. There's nothing more important than headphones. I don't care if you're running with somebody, running without somebody, because it's going to get to a point where you're not going to be able to communicate because you're running too fast or you're exerted or whatever, and music literally is going to help you keep going. Um, there has been so many days where you just are running so long. Like my nine miles, it took two hours, guys. Two hours of solid running. I ran four and a half miles away from my house four and a half miles back to my house. 
there are so many times that you want to quit. You, you, it's not that you get bored. You just become complacent. It's just like the same thing over and over and over. Um, I'll put the headphones I use in the description below. I'll put some other headphones and just kind of give you and I a couple of selections or whatever. By the way, when you go shop through my Amazon links, it really helps me out tremendously. Now, this is going to be something that I feel that helped me, this next one. And the final thing that I want to say is run smaller runs along the way to keep you inspired about your larger run. Um, I don't have a lot of money, okay? Um, and I'm not saying that to like speak that into existence, but I'm saying that for the simple fact because it's actually true currently. Not going to stay that way, okay? We're not going to say that it, I'm going to be poor forever because I don't want to say that. Um, but the 5K that I ran recently um, was paid for by one of my clients, Mark Gibson. Thank you very much. Um, he was so generous to be able to help me out with doing that, and we ran it together. By the way, he got a great time of 37 minutes at 64 years old and only trained for three freaking weeks. So that was amazing. Uh, Mark's in really good shape for his age. Um, and that was really awesome. But make sure you do those little races. And I, if I can afford more, I'm going to do more up until the point I want to do them all the time. But it's all about money. They're not super expensive, but they are about 30 to $40. You can also do virtual runs, which is basically not as fun. But um, because you'll find out, like, the amount of 5Ks and 10Ks that I've ran in the last, like, continuously are probably... Every single run, I run three 5Ks per week, and I run a 10K every single week. So three 5Ks and a 10K every single week. But technically, I'm not racing at a race. Like, because my Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or my Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday runs are four miles, five miles, four miles, and they're going up. And then my weekend race is like nine, ten miles now. So, or run. Is like nine, ten miles. So if you can do virtual runs, you get medals like crazy, like 10, 20 bucks for a medal. And then you just uh, send in your times and stuff like that. But it kind of is up to you. Not as fun because you don't get the event or whatever, but you can still get the bling if you're running. Ha ha ha. <laughs> whatever. But really important. And I'm using my 5Ks when I can do them as like a time trial. So I just did my 10K for the first time ever. After they canceled the first time, whatever. I'm not super bitter about that. Yes, I am. Why would you do that? It's always hot in Arizona. There's no reason to reschedule a run. <sighs> Still bitter. But um, ran that and then used the 5K to kind of see where I was at, but also to push for speed because I really run kind of slow most of the time and I don't really push for speed, but those 5Ks and those 10Ks will kind of uh, give you the opportunity to run it fast, get you excited and stuff like that, and then kind of see where you're at to get a better time on your long run, your half marathon. You guys, I hope this helped you. Um, hopefully, I will give you an update on how it went. I'll probably video all kinds of stuff and post all stuff about my journey. I know this was a long video. I appreciate you guys watching it. I hope I cleared up some stuff. If you do have questions about your half marathon journey or how to run a 5K or a 10K, put it in the comment section below. I will definitely 100% give you any kind of information. And by the time you, chances are, by the time you're watching this, I've probably already ran my half marathon. And then who knows where I've gone from there. You guys be stronger than your excuses. Remember to spread love, not hate. Drink your damn water and stay on track. Peace. Good luck on your next race.